All right, uh, let's get into these um, these bad trips of mine. Um, now, to be honest, um, I don't really know how bad they were. You would call them challenging trips, and I could see how they would be considered extremely bad trips for some people. Um, I had a different point of view, even while going through them. Um, uh, but they were they were very uh, very hard, I guess is what you could say. Very dark. Um, so I had mentioned right the whole way I, I even came about found finding of the psilocybin mushroom was through the fact that I was a police officer, you know, and um, and taking several drug classes. Well, I also told you about come time of my sixth trip about that time I en ended up leaving the police force. And um, I was very, uh, man, I was, uh, at first, I guess it didn't really sink in. Um, but the more and more I thought about it, the more and more angry I became, the more and more frustrated. I had always been frustrated with the, the police force, you know. I mean, shoot, I mean, just from straight out of the academy, um, the police forces, a lot of people don't understand how corrupt their local police force is, even on a lower level. Um, you know, I mean, I, I come from, or I, I was a police officer in a small town um, with not a lot of people. Um, and there wasn't a lot of officers, and yet still there was just... Um, just an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of corruption and just political nonsense. And there was a few really bad cops. There were a few really, really great cops too. I mean, uh, some of the best people I ever met were, were, were there and then some of the worst people I've ever met were there. So anyways, this all kind of played into the, the following trips, you know. I, I basically had a form of PTSD from the police force and, and much the same it also kind of having uh, left the police force it kind of reminded me of having left the the army I had a um, pretty much the same experience in the army um, dealing with people that uh, weren't very good people and um, you know I, I, I had it had been a long time I'd been out of the army and I'd gotten over the majority of my, uh, my army stuff. But, uh, so, so anyways, so I, I, uh, I had like a series, a series of trips, um, where I was dealing with that stuff. Uh, probably the first one, um, I think the first one I remember, I still saw visual colors and everything like that. Uh, I still saw a lot of visual stuff and um, I'd be listening to music and I'd be laying down in my, my trip room and everything like that. And my, my mind would start to wander towards thinking about, um, about the police force and about the problems that I had there. And as, it's, as my mind's wandering off to that, towards that, you know, I would start to become frustrated and angry and um, so so those things manifested in my in my trips you know the, just frustration and anger and um, I started to see things like the abyss you know I started to go through my own personal hell or something like that placing you know, sitting there trying to place blame on others and then trying to place blame on myself and going through, um, trying to, trying to figure out what had happened, you know, and the, and the trip facilitated that really, really well and in a very extreme manner, you know, you're sitting there, you're, you're tripping and, and it's, um, it's, a uh, very interesting thing to think about so um so then after that first one my first kind of hellish trip which is like i said mostly 
it was colors and then it was me getting angry feelings and everything like that um then i made the mistake <laughs> i had mentioned i had treasure coasts as one of the one of the strains i had treasure coast uh is almost all emotions and almost no visuals. Um, it's still, I mean, every time I've ever taken it, that's what it's like. It's its all emotional and it's no um, visuals. And so if you take that and you're in a bad mood or you're in a, an extreme mood, um, those treasure coasts are gonna hit hard. <laughs> so I made the stupid mistake one night and I was a little drunk. <laughs> I was a little drunk and uh, I decided to take 16 grams of Treasure Coast. Oh man, <laughs> I was paralyzed on the ground. I literally couldn't move my body. <laughs> I just was flat, dead weight on the ground and it freaking hurt. <laughs> it hurt and I was in my hell and I was frustrated angry and mad and I could just muster up enough strength to like lift my fist up off the ground and slam it on the ground and just like oh man what a hell it was <laughs> and uh, luckily I, I had my girlfriend on the phone <laughs> um, I had called her after I, I took them and she, she ended up staying up on the phone with me all night with this trip um, and <laughs> I'm just man I'm 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 just letting it all out. I'm like literally just, you know, just talking about the horrible people and the horrible things and horrible things that uh, I felt I had done and everything and placing blame here and there and at them, at me, at, you know, just anything I could find to place blame on, any, any place where I could, where I could, uh, push the anger or hatred towards or push the frustration towards or um it was uh it was extreme it was very hellish it was very long uh so that was the only time I ever took more than like probably seven grams I've taken seven grams since then but um that was probably the mo that was the most I'd ever taken and it was the longest lasting trip too. That lot, that thing lasted all flipping night. Like I took them at like midnight and I wasn't done with the trip until like probably 10 o'clock the next day. Like it was a long, long ass trip. And, um, and like I said, I was paralyzed for most of it, you know? Um, what was really funny, what was interesting, and I have a theory on this now, although I haven't, I haven't drank much since then, um, but I have a theory that the mushrooms can override another substance like, um, like alcohol. You know, people talk about, you know, it being a great way to cure alcoholism is by taking the mushrooms. Basically about, maybe about an hour into the trip, I was no longer drunk at all. Um, and I was just solely on the mushrooms and I could feel it too. I felt the drunkenness because it was there one second and I even said it to my girlfriend. I'm like, I'm feeling the drunkenness and then all of a sudden it was just gone. The drunkenness was gone. I was no longer like slurring my words or anything like that. I was no longer feeling like that woozy drunkenness feeling and instead I was just square on the mushrooms. My senses were all heightened and everything despite the fact that I, I couldn't move and I was paralyzed on the ground um, yeah so that was a that was one hell of a trip yeah don't recommend you guys do it but I think these trips are important I think I think going through the bad trips going through the hell trips are really really important if you want to get to the to the 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 next parts because because basically every trip after hit here gets more and more extreme to like a point that they become unbelievable you know which is which is the insane part it just it starts going to um yeah it just starts going to an unbelievable place you know i mean this is this is the this is the thing that you have to go through and I think 
it's it's like the realization of what's going to happen when you die you know if you go when you die and you can't bring anything with you from this world right so you can't bring anger frustration remembering of the past or of not letting go of things that happen to you um, this is like what the bible teaches you know you need to you need forgiveness from god right and part of that forgiveness is you have to let go you know that's what that's what jesus does jesus takes on your sin right so you have to let go of of your sins there right you have to let go of your anger your frustration you have to let go of any blame you place on yourself and if you can do that that's where you break through you know and i think some other people kind of you know there are other people that aren't christians that trip and i think they've gotten past that point too but i don't think they understand it quite as well a lot of them look at it as just kind of being at peace or something like that i think there's something more there i think that what the mushrooms are doing is the mushrooms are just they're showing you what it's gonna be like they're um it's it's like giving you a, a head start on what you're gonna have to deal with when you do die and so I think that's what the Bible's teaching us right there is you gotta let go you gotta give up you know that those those the sins for lack of a better word the the emotions the anger frustration or whatever else it is it could be it could be other things too like money it could be you know like lust and everything like that um, you know I mean one of the things the Bible says that uh, you know money is is you know, it's the, what, what it's the hardest thing for for a rich man to get to heaven. You know, it's like going through the what does it say, like the eye of a needle or something like that. <laughs> it's um, and the idea is 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 so if you're successful in this life, you know, you're gonna want to take that with you. You're like, wait a minute, now I was successful in that life, you know. And so when they find out that all of this stuff that they've amassed, these wealths that they wealth that they have amassed and everything they can't take with them to the next life and so it's it's going to be a point of frustration and of them not wanting to let go of that and that'll be their sin so anyways this is my theories <laughs> sorry we're getting a little preachy on there um get back to the trips here so now the next trip after that, I, I got through with that trip. My parents actually came over. They didn't know I was tripping or anything like that, or I was, I was on mushrooms or anything like that, but they, they came over later in the day and just kind of, you know, like helped me. I just told them I had like a, I was having a rough day or something, or a rough morning or something like that. And, I, and they just came over and, you know, helped, helped me clean up the house and that kind of stuff and whatnot. And um, so that was really good. Um, but then, so then I went on to the next hellish trip, and and this one was different though. The next one, if I had to guess, it was probably on Golden Teachers, but I could have been on B pluses. One of those two it was either on Golden Teachers, or B plus. Basically, after that one with the Treasure Coast, I never had Treasure Coasts again. Um, <laughs> uh, I think I did have one one or two other times but very light amounts because i wanted to see i think if they had if there was any way to get any visuals off them and then when i found out there couldn't that you couldn't get any visuals off them i basically stopped um taking them um so anyways um so i get to the the next trip or like i said i probably on golden teacher b plus visuals back and everything but now now i'm starting to see um, not just the colors and stuff. I'm actually starting to have visions. And I had kind of calmed myself when it came to those things. I'd kind of rationalized and let go a little bit. And I would have these trips where I'd be staring down into the abyss, right? Like looking down into hell seeing other people there seeing atrocities committed by mankind and everything like that and i wasn't scared or anything um on any, none of these trips was i scared you know and i and i still have a hard time saying they were bad trips i, I still would prefer to say they were challenging trips they're kind of bringing you face to face with you know 
like man's sin or something mm -hmm. like that. And so, and so that's what this one was. This, this, you know, another one of these bad trips after the, after the 16 gram trip. You know, I, I mean, I was probably laying down. Yeah, I was probably laying down on my, on my couch again, and just, just staring into the abyss. I mean, for, for hours at a time, just staring down there. And and and, and after a while, I started to ask. You know, I listened to a little bit of Jordan Peterson, Peterson, where he talks about you know these types of things, and I sit there and I ask, how deep is it? And man, it went on forever. I mean, you're staring down into the abyss and you're looking down there. It goes on forever. Man, it's crazy how deep it is. Um, yeah, and. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting. You, you did kind of get the idea that hell had layers and everything like that, kind of in the way in, in Dante's Inferno, but it, they weren't so as well drawn out, and there wasn't like a only nine of them. It, like it, it's like it just kept on going forever instead. And um, but but you did get the idea there were layers. It's, it kind of seemed like a like rings going down and down and down, and just kept going though. So, um, yeah, that was, that was really interesting there. Let me go ahead and take a quick, uh, quick break and, and, and shoot up my sponsors and I'll, I'll keep talking and we'll probably go a little, a little further along exploring these themes here. Hey guys, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about the app I use to make this podcast that you're listening to. Um, it's a free app. It's called Anchor. Uh, when I started uh, creating my podcast, I never thought that I would get as many uh, plays as I've been getting. Um, one of the coolest things that Anchor does is it actually distributes your podcast for you, so um, it can so the podcast can be heard on like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and and many many more. Um, Anchor has a bunch of creation tools, so you can record and edit right from your phone. Um, you can also download the program on your computer. Um, it's basically it's everything that you need to make a podcast all in like one place. Um, so download uh, the free Anchor app uh, or go to anchor.fm to get started. Um, so while I was going on these um, these hellish trips here, um, I was doing them alone. My girlfriend was not with me. Um, like I said, she called on that, or I called her on that 16 gram Treasure Coast trip. So, um, but I, I was doing them on myself. I was I was laying on my couch and um, thinking on them. And so, uh, oh, it's interesting. I had heard a Joe Rogan podcast. It was one of his older ones, but he was explaining how the psilocybin mushrooms kind of like trick you into taking a really high dose you know like you go through them you're having fun and everything and one day you you know they kind of trick you into taking a much much bigger dose <laughs> and uh, I think I think the mushrooms kind of understand or something that you need to get past these things they need to they need to fix you first they need to or get, get you thinking right I shouldn't say fix you because I don't know, necessarily know that they they actually fix you, but I, I think they need to get you thinking in a, in a correct manner, and so um, that's uh, and that, and that's kind of how they do it. They sit there and they help you deal with some of your problems when you have the bad trips. That's what they're trying to do. The 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 challenging trips, the bad trips. It's trying to to show you your faults your problems that you need to deal with, that you need to um, let go of, right? Um, now see, there's many ways that, that this, this can happen. Once again, if, if, if you take all these trips and you, and you let them run through an archetypical course, if you filter them through an archetype if you put them through the paces of the Bible and if you take the mushrooms in an appropriate mindset it's going to result 
in the best possible outcomes, you know, um, like true change in your life and stuff like that. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm there or anything like that. I'm not nowhere near, but I have seen significant results in things, you know, well, like your mood and everything. And the mood isn't attributed solely to the mushrooms. It's not like I feel good, like necessarily after the mushrooms. It's more the fact that my mind is thinking in a better, clearer way after the mushrooms. You know, the mushrooms aren't euphoric. I really, really don't like it when other, when some other people say that they feel euphoria on the mushrooms. I don't think they know what euphoria is. I don't think that's euphoric when you're on the mushrooms. I think that's a, um, I mean, it's an amazing feeling, that's for sure. It's definitely a, um, oh, it's an incredible feeling. I'll give it that. But it's not euphoric. Euphoria is what you feel when you take cocaine or when you take meth or when you take like uh, oxycodones or when you take, um, shoot, in any of those um, narcotics. Narcotics, that's a huge thing on narcotics. Narcotics make you feel euphoric. And so that's not what the mushrooms do. You know, they might enhance your mood. If you're in a really good, happy mood, the mushrooms might do that. They might enhance your your mood. And so you might confuse that for euphoria, euphoria the fact that you feel so happy. Um, so anyways, moving on though, the, the thing with this is, the thing with this is, is when you have a bad trip, right? If you take mushrooms long enough, you will have your bad trips. And the thing is you have to figure out why did that bad trip happen? What are the mushrooms trying to teach me? You know, I'm not saying the mushroom, <laughs> the way I say that the mushrooms are trying to teach me. It's not like I think the mushrooms are sentient or anything like that. Um, they do display some signs of intelligence, but I think it's more the fact of you connecting to the, the spirit realm and everything like that. And I think it's the fact that you can't bring that stuff with you to the spirit realm. And vice, and actually there's, a, there's another thing, a vice versa type effect here. You can't bring some things back from the spirit realm, right? It's gonna teach you, God's only gonna let you, the things come back with you that you need. You know, you're not gonna get anything more. Um, because I've been there on the mushrooms and in the other realm and I am getting some serious, seriously interesting knowledge, um, but I can't bring it back with me. And the reason you can't bring it back with you, and, and uh, shoot, Paul talks about this in the Bible. You know, when he goes up to the third heaven, I think it's uh, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, uh, it's like Second Corinthians 12 or something like that. He talks about when he goes up to the third heaven, he goes up to the spirit realm, basically. That's what the third heaven is in the Bible, if you, if you didn't know. Um, he talks about it, and he says in, that, in those very passages that he, um, he, he learned things and he can't speak of them. And I don't think it means that he's holding something back. I think it means that he literally can't remember what it was that he learned there. He knows he learned more knowledge there, and he couldn't bring it back because God doesn't allow it, you know? And so that's what he's talking about in that, in that passage. Um, so, and, and so, so I think it's the same way when we're coming, coming from here to there, there are things we can't bring into the spirit realm. Like, you know, and then the obvious things are things like, you know, physical things like money. You can't bring money, wealth, you can't bring gold up there. You know, it's worthless. It's absolutely worthless to the entities on the other side. You know, the spirits, the angels, demons, whatever you want to call them, you know, absolutely worthless to them. They don't care about that stuff. You know, it has no value over there. And so, um, so, and, and then part of that also is you can't bring, you know, your, your hatred and anger, anger, throwing your tantrums and everything like that. And that's, that's one way I looked at it, you know, is the, um, the, the, de the demons don't care, you know, when you're on the other side 
and uh, you want to throw a tantrum, right? If you throw a tantrum, you're just going to get one of their attention, and they're just going to get, they, you know, they're just going to have their way with you, you know. So you can't do that. But you got to be as, um, you got to be knowledgeable, and you have to have shed your um, your worldly problems, I guess, so to speak. Um, if any of that makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going pretty deep on this one. Pretty deep. But it's important. I mean, it's like I said, this, th these are the most important trips that anybody can have. Even if you're not a Christian, even if you don't think that you're making it to the, to the third heaven, or if you don't make, think you're making it to the spirit realm, or if you think it's another spirit realm, and, or maybe it's Asgard, whatever you want to call it. I don't care what you want to call it. You know, but the, the, the for sure thing is, is that what the bad trips are doing is they are trying to teach you something. They're trying to teach you something about your problems, yourself, and what you need to do is figure out um, how to appropriately deal with those problems so that way you don't have the bad trip again, right? And so, like I said, many people that don't come at this from a Christian perspective and come at it from like a Buddhist perspective or they come at it from a yin-yang perspective, um, they still have to do the same thing. You still have to shed those um, worldly problems and not bring them with you over there. So, you know, we can get into later discussions about, you know, because I, when I've, one of my trips I did reach, you know, basically nirvana um, or what the Buddhists would call nirvana or or something like that. I don't know. The, <laughs> I, I'm not an Eastern philosopher. I'm definitely a Western philosopher or a Western theologian, I should say. But, uh, you know, I basically got to that point. Now, my interpretation was it was it was like the Western God, but I've heard of an Eastern, I, I, I remember um, watching a trip report of an Eastern um, thinker and, and he related it to, you know, the Buddhist tradition. Although the funny thing is in the same sentence, he actually said it, it could also be described as, um, as uh, the loving embrace of Jesus Christ. So that was interesting too. That's what he does. His words, not mine. So he said it could have been that. But, uh, you know, or I think he conflated, he said the two are the same or something like that. So it's, it's an interesting thing, you know, and, and there could be a lot of discussion on, you know, what, where are you really at and everything, you know what I mean? Um, I have, this is an interesting thing, that one I, I brought up right there about the Nirvana and everything like that and that spot. The way he described it, the other guy that I watched his trip report of, the way he described it was the exact same way I described it before I saw his video. I, I, I first described it to my girlfriend, and then I watched the video. And um, seeing there's and there's other things like that too. The first time I saw a is a seraphim or a cherubim, whatever the wheel one is, the wheel with the eyes around it that's in the Bible. I think, I, is it Ezekiel or Isaiah? One of those sees it, Ezekiel. I didn't know that existed. Like I don't have my Bible memorized and there were some, you know, there are some books I've still never read in my Bible, you know what I mean? I'm, I focus mostly on, on things like Genesis, Exodus, you know, and then the gospels. Um, but, you know, this was, um, it's a thing described in the Bible. I saw it. And then later on, I found out about it in the Bible. So it lends credence to the, the fact that the place that you're going um, is not just an individual place in your mind. Jordan Peterson makes the argument that, um, that it doesn't make sense that psychedelics makes everybody see the same stuff, right? Or DMT or yeah, just any, yeah, DMT or, or mushrooms. Why is it that people are seeing the same things? You hear about the DMT lady, the, the blue DMT lady. So many people see her. And she seems to say that she knows other people that those people also know. So that lends credence to the fact 
that you know it's it's not just in our mind you know that it, that it is accessing something else a spirit realm another dimension whatever you want to call it see i think here's another thing that happens when you um when you take the psychedelics is language breaks down like at a hardcore level because you can't describe everything that you're seeing i call that the abyss you know i'm looking down at the abyss some people might call it hell you know there's a myriad of things that people might call it you know and um it's the same thing with the angels the demons the entities the spirits what do you want to call these things you know um so all words fit and then but not all words are correct entirely either you know and so it's a hard thing and so what we're having to do with our language here is we're having to try to and this is the this is the problem with making these podcasts and describing these trips the biggest problem that everybody comes across is they're trying to describe something that's almost indescribable you know and so we're having to use old words ancient words to tr and we're trying to have to connect them to things that other people are going to understand that haven't tripped before you know if i'm sitting there and i'm describing something um like a cherubim or a or a seraphim or whatever you know if i'm trying to describe that to the layman it sounds like fucking cuckoo you know <laughs> it sounds nuts sounds nuts you saw what you saw a wheel with eyes on it and you know and it was spinning around and looking at you what the heck is that you know what i mean it sounds ridiculous so anyways but i think people that have taken psychedelics i i do think most of them get this part um it's interesting it's also interesting that a lot of people are taking these experiences from different viewpoints and are coming to conclusions that match their viewpoints um i find that a hard thing to grasp with you know i'm coming to it from a western you know a uh, christian viewpoint you know and as i'm coming at it from that direction everything seems to fit now I've also talked with a couple Eastern tradition like people online um, and they're coming at it from their perspective and everything seems to fit for them too. So it, it, it kind of becomes a problem, um, especially when you sit there and you say, you know, Jesus is the, you know, the only way, um, or Jesus himself said he was the only way. Um, nobody gets to the Father except through him. So that's important. That's important to keep in mind. God's pretty easy to find over there. I'll tell you that. Um, well, I don't know how easy it is to find. I don't know. You can find God out there. You can speak to God. You can talk to him. You can ask him questions. All sorts of stuff. You know, a lot of stuff. Uh, the, the best stuff fits in right with the Old Testament, man. Genesis, Exodus. That stuff's amazing, man. Uh, Jacob, Jacob wrestling with an angel uh, in his tent all night. I'm not going to say he was on psychedelics. He could have just been having a divine experience outside of psychedelics. But man, it sure as heck sounds like a psychedelic experience. You know, uh, Moses, the burning bush. Man, that sounds like a psychedelic experience. I'm not saying they were taking, you know, mushrooms or something like that. Um, but we don't know what they did back then, you know? Uh, so like, uh, you know, I don't take a whole lot of credence in everything Joe Rogan says, but, you know, Joe, Joe Rogan pointed out the fact, you know, look, imagine you're these, you're these people, you don't really know and have identified every like mushroom species that there is. And some look edible, some don't and maybe you see one that looks edible you you know you collect it you dry it out you know and then a few days later you you end up eating it or you're storing it and traveling around with it and then you end up eating it one day and all of a sudden you have a divine experience and you're like well what happened you know was it 
you know, and maybe some people didn't connect it, or maybe some people did connect it to, to something like that. Or, or, or once again, it could just be, you know, God chooses when people have certain experiences, and that could be the case too. So, you know, these are questions. These are questions that I need to have that this is what this podcast is all about. This is this this right here, this is probably our best episode yet right here is cuz we're we really got to find out or I'm trying to find out, you know, where the lines are and where things don't match up, you know. And so so far things seem to match up really well, which is absolutely incredible, you know. Um Everything seems to make sense. So, anyways, um, let's see how long we've gone. I think we've gone long enough here. Those are my hell bad trip episodes, I guess. Um, I probably had about four of them if I had to guess. Um, you know, basically I, I described three, but you could imagine there was an extra one in there somewhere, I'm sure. So, the next, the next episode I think is interesting because it's how I got out of these bad trips um, is kind of going through a spiritual transformation, I guess, in my life, or trying to go through a spiritual transformation. Um, realizing what that the mushrooms were doing something more. And I wanna, go, I, I wanna finish off by saying um, the mushrooms now have transformed like almost oh god man i don't want to say anything really weird but they've almost transformed like my being at night now um there are times when i go to sleep that i can still think like while i'm sleeping and my dreams my dreams now are incredibly vivid like i have some of the most vivid dreams you could possibly imagine um so, uh, and then, then on top of that, I have this weird innate ability now to actually think while I'm sleeping, which is a, it's, it's so strange and it's, a, it's, it's pretty disruptive actually. I ended up waking up last night, like at 3 a.m. because my brain was actually like going full speed thinking. And um, so I found that the most incredible thing. And I actually woke up feeling like I was um, like on a very, very low dose of mushrooms, like probably like one gram or something like that. My, my senses, my sight were just a little bit better, you know, um, and then my mind was just a little clearer. So um, it's, just, it's just really interesting. It's, it, like this is the most fascinating thing I've ever come across in my entire life, you know. I've done quite a bit of extensive traveling. I've, you know, I've been all across the United States. Obviously, I've been to Iraq. I've been to Ireland. I've been to Germany. Um, you know, if, if you want to consider consider on that Iraq trip, I also went to Kuwait for a couple of weeks. Um, you know, so I, I'm. It's really interesting. Actually, when I w when I was in Iraq, I was actually stationed on the Tigris River. Um, like one of our checkpoints was right there on the Tigris River and I from one of my um, guard towers I could look out over the river so it's really interesting we were up there in Mosul so and if you guys don't know Mosul is where Nineveh was Nineveh is in the Bible um, that's the place where Jonah was charged with going to you know get them to repent so crazy thing I don't know if that that, that that's probably just nothing but I, I'm telling you I've been around the world you know I've done a lot of studying I have about I have about eight years worth of college um, I do not have a degree though uh, when I was in call when I'm in college um, I, I tend to go back and forth you know I'll, I'll go to college for two years and then I'll, I'll not go for a couple years and I'll go back for another two years and I'll go back and, you know and while I'm in, in college uh, I do study a lot of art stuff, but some of my favorite classes though were things like philosophy. Um, some of my favorite classes were a history, a lot of history. World history was amazing. Uh, I took a world history class where they went over, you know, 
uh, basically the stuff, you know, Roman times and things like that. They, they talk a little bit about, uh, about Jesus during that time and they talked about Pontius Pilate and how Pilate actually, post leaving Israel, uh, this is like another proof that like Jesus, like, <laughs> like, uh, like everything in the Bible is like true, is, is post um, Jesus' uh, crucifixion, uh, Pilate goes back to Rome and he becomes like a governor over there, uh, back closer towards, you know, the center of the, of the kingdom or whatever, the empire, sorry. Um, he becomes a, a, like, a leader over there and he actually wrote about the fact that he would, rem he had dreams and he remembered Jesus' crucifixion. So very strange stuff, very strange stuff. And, and sorry, I got a little preachy, a little religious on this one and everything like that. It's eventually where this whole podcast is going to go, though. I mean, it's where I want it to come out at. You know, the point of giving all these um, trips in archetypical order, or I mean, in chronological order, is to show the archetype, is to show that it's moving. We're moving through stuff. I have the the first two are like, you know, the call to adventure, and then. Uh, you know, the sixth trip is like the, um, is the entering of a new world, you know what I mean? A world that is, is not the same. And then now I'm facing hardship in that new world, you know, and having to deal with my in inadequacies. Now the next step is I'm going to learn uh, how to function in that world. And then, you know, it's going to, it just increases, it just keeps going up. And so I think the point of the podcast, though, is, is the full circle is to come back. I, I think that's why I have to do the podcast. I'm not for sure, to tell you the truth. I, I have a deep, overwhelming sense that I need to tell people about these experiences. Um, so, but I got to go about it the right way and everything. I can't just go out in the middle of the streets and start shouting, holy shit, guys, you guys need to try mushrooms, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's clearly not right. Um, so, and, and also I need to make sure that what I am saying is coherent and follows a line and is logical as well. Like things have to fit in both this world and the next and they have to, they all have to go together. So when, once I find an inconsistency somewhere, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be something I'm gonna have to deal with, you know what I mean? If I do find inconsistencies, which could happen which could very well happen, um, but as of right now, it's, it seems things seem to be going good. So, anyways, leave you guys off with that. You know, hey, if you guys are uh, made it this far and you're listening on uh, on YouTube, hey, like, comment, subscribe, please. It'd be great. Thank you. <laughs>